Yo, what's up guys hope you guys are doing good. So today we are going to see what if Naruto has feeling for Makima part 1. Hope you will enjoy this video so before we start please like the video and subscribe to our channel and hit bell notification it motivates me to upload more fanfics for my lovely audience. So let's get started. It was a chance encounter. You see, Makima hadn't expected to meet Naruto Uzumaki. Despite what some might say, it was not a planned event by any means or measure, indeed, had she been at all aware of what he could do and what he was capable of what would transpire from said meeting she would have endeavored to stay far, far, far away from such a living embodiment of chaos. Probably would have left Japan altogether, really. Hindsight was as they say, 2020. Looking back, she'd almost certainly underestimated him. And yet somehow, someway, she stumbled upon him in the most mundane of ways. Was it chance meeting, a twist of fate, or just bad, blind bloody luck? She would remember that night well, the moon was full, the night cold, the air so thick she could taste in on her tongue, see it in the steam when she breathed. The cold seldom never bothered her anyway. Not so her escort, they complained most bitterly, growling and grousing every step of the way. She'd taken two men with her on a whim. They were middling at best, mere pawns she had little hope for. She didn't particularly care for them one way or the other, he'd make useful meat shields if nothing else. After all she was very much a creature of control. Or devil, really. Semantics, she supposed. They found him in an old abandoned warehouse off the wharf. He wasn't making any attempt to hide, nor did he run when they found him within. He sat upon a mound of bodies, some devil, others human. Each had one defining feature. They'd been painted orange from head to toe and they were, all of them, very much alive. So much so that she could hear them even from here, their groans growl in some amusing cases of pain was a most amusing melody to her ears. Dot, 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 dot the perpetrator slightly less so. The culprit himself didn't look all that worse for wear. Bar a rather grievous cut to his right cheek, he was utterly unharmed. She took him in at a glance, to the naked eye he looked, ordinary. Bright blue eyes framed by tawny blonde hair, whiskered cheeks, and a mild smile. He was just the sort of person she might have walked past on the street without so much as a second thought. Even his clothes weren't much to look at, orange and black tattered and flat. He paid them utterly no mind as he unwrapped a cheeseburger and bit into it. And yet despite that, of perhaps in spite of it, he had a strange scent. Not blood or bone or battle, he smelled like, fire. No, that wasn't quite right, was it? She inhaled deeply, trying to make sense of the strange smell assaulting her senses. There were more scents about him, clinging to his shoulders and stomach. 9. She couldn't hope to quantify them properly. It didn't stop her from trying. Sand and a low lonely wind. Baleful blue fire. A deep presence beneath the ocean. The vague aroma of burning earth. An odd steam. A sickly sweet perfume almost like an acid, mingling now with the scintillating scent of charred ozone that heralded a lightning trike. And there, lurking beneath them all. Death. She recoiled with a tilt of the head last one had her recoiling. Child. A voice rumbled through her head. You may smell me and my kind, but I see you. Huh. Her soon-to-be victim muttered between bites, distracting her. This era has decent food if nothing else. His gaze flitted down to them a moment later and noticed her. Hey, lady, you look important. A quick gulp followed as he polished off the last of his meal. Did you come to fight me, too? Mildly bemused by him, Makima stepped forward. That depends on your answer. Did you cause all this? You up. He smacked his lips, producing an audible. Folks wouldn't leave me alone, so I kicked their asses and knocked him out. Hope you don't mind. It made sense, of course. They'd had reports of missing devil hunters for days now. Seems this was where most of them wound up. One last question. The ghost of a smile tugged at the corner of her mouth. Would you rather die as a devil or live as my pet? Pet. His brow furrowed. Oi, oi, I ain't a devil, 
Neither. No devils here. That was rich. How could she possibly pass up a pun like that? Answer. She couldn't. He was trying to provoke her, and Hell knew he'd managed to get under her skin in such a short time. Oh, but there is one. Her lips curled ever so slightly. You're just not looking in the right place. Are you as blind as you are deaf? His eyes widened in confusion, then realization. Ah, hell. Her assistants bridled. Miss Makima, ma'am, what are you do? She flicked a hand out, lazily obliterating the guards accompanying her with the backswing of her arm. Their ruined corpses toppled behind in a bloody shower. Easily replaceable. Besides, she could just say the devil did it. No one would be able to prove her wrong. Let's see how quick you are. She flicked a chain at him. Fetch. He barked a laugh at her. Fetch. I'm not your pet. Not yet. He wasn't. But he would be. Dot. 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 Oh. Dear. He'd caught it. That was new. Oi. The blonde turned his head and exhaled slowly, expelling a plume of steam from his mouth. That wasn't very nice. You're not a good person, are you? Was she? Makima thought she was a perfectly reasonable devil, better than most, really. I have my objectives. You wouldn't understand. Try me. The wound on his cheek she'd noticed earlier closed. Fast. Too fast to be human. Earlier, he'd said he wasn't a devil. What was he, then? He yanked her chain. In hindsight, Makima knew she probably should have let go of that thing definitely should have, because she found her face in his hand a heartbeat. Sorry. His fingers began to squeeze round her wide eyes, gonna be a bit rough. It would have been simple for him to run her through with his fist then and there. Dot but he didn't. Instead he launched her across the warehouse, toward the very entrance by which she'd come. Plenty of power behind it, but his action smacked of foolishness, a man unwilling to stain his hands with the blood of others. As such, Makima had all the time in the world to right herself and face him once more. Strong, chatty, dot and naive, the ghost of a smile plucked at her lips as the shadows stirred behind her. I'll be sure to put it on your tombstone. He flung a brace of knives her way. She deflected every last one, drew her sword and swept in at his head. It shattered against his skin the blade bursting into a thousand shards of sharpened steel to leave her clutching the now useless hilt. Blue eyes shimmered into gold as her own widened, a hint of orange dusting the lids of his eyes. Sorry. A finger flitted up to touch her forehead. Sword proof. Flick. Makima's world inverted. With a single flick of his finger she went sprawling, smashed through the warehouse wall and crashed across the wharf. Her body struck the water bounced once, and then, quite suddenly, he was there, levitating beside her as she tumbled through the air. His head tilted and in that instant, Makima caught the hint of a razor grin in the moonlight before his boot blasted its way into her ribs, shattering three as he sent her skipping back the way she came. Gravity was most unkind. She struck an abandoned building and it came down on her head, burying her body and skewering her seven ways to Sunday. Makima couldn't die easily. Her contract assured that, indeed, her wounds were already healing. As such, she felt no fear. And yet, her lips pursed in a frown as she glared up at the ceiling of her impromptu tomb. Well, this was a problem, wasn't it? He was clearly faster than her, if not stronger. She'd never met a devil like this before. Just what was he? His scent made no sense and oh dear here heck me gain. Oh. Geez, I'm sorry. She heard a muffled grunt mere moments before the mountain of debris shifted overhead. I didn't realize you were that squishy. Moonlight greeted her. She thrust a hand up. A storm of chains cracked out like a giant whip, blasting him backward with a whoop. Careful, she hummed, dusting herself off. I could have died. Hum. The blonde boy who may or may not be a devil thumbed his chin as he climbed to his feet. She torn a bloody trench in his chest but even that was healing now as she looked on. So you're sturdy, then. Or you're just using a weird jutsu. Suppose that's good. His hand fell as his body adopted a loose stance. Means I can start using some of mine. He stomped a foot, 
drew his fists up, and stepped forward. Remember you started this. Don't go complaining on me now. Her lips pursed. Whatever is a jutsu, Rasengan. Oh, that was a jutsu. It hurt more than she expected. A spiraling sphere smashed her down, eviscerating her torso and annihilating her innards to kick up a plume of dust. Her contract prevailed of course, some poor soul in Japan probably exploded in her place. Her body stitched itself back together in the time it took a human to blink, and she was no worse for wear. Lady, I've done this shtick before. Her annoying adversary stomped through the smoke, uncaring as her wounds closed. You gonna stay down, or do I have to put ya down? She absently scrubbed her face of blood and sighed. I'm afraid I don't understand that reference, boy. No worries, you will. And I ain't a boy. He jerked a thumb up to the strange metal plate worn round his head. I'm Naruto Uzumaki and I've taken way worse than this. That said, he tilted his head to regard her again, a gesture awfully reminiscent of a certain kitsune, it must be sad. Her brow furrowed. What is? Being alone. He swept a hand her way. I can tell. You're not really enjoying this, are you? You don't know me. Don't have to. He thumbed his nose at her. You think you're special. I've dealt with dozens of your kind back where I'm from. We'll fight it out, and you'll see. But we don't have to. We can talk. She flicked a chain at him. He caught it and reeled her in like a fish again. A heel smashed into her chest with devastating force. She felt her heart tremble and several organs besides, smashing her body against a wall. He stomped down on one foot to pin her and held her there. Look, he sighed. We don't have to do this. Something sparked to life in Makima in her. It felt like, anger. Scowling, pointed her right hand at him, forming a gun with two fingers. She pressed it to his torso. Bang. Say what you would about Naruto, but he knew how to take a hit. Even as a massive hole burst through his chest, he only grunted. He didn't even look angry, only mildly annoyed, no confused, like he had seen her attack coming and not thought to dodge in time. Or maybe he had. Whatever the case, he stood his ground with that baffled look on his face. Good. It suited him. Laughter bubbled out of her. Bang. This time, Naruto stumbled as a second wound ripped into his torso. Bang. Makima dragged out the word, giggling as she shot a hole in his stomach. Naruto laughed right back. Why? Why was he laughing? Did he think this was funny? He grinned at her, the grin of a man who had seen terrible things, horrors most men couldn't comprehend. Is that all ya got? Makima's smile died an ugly death. Bang. She blew off his right arm, then his legs, and sent him skidding across the wharf. She could have finished him, but she didn't. Was she enjoying herself? She hadn't felt this in so long. She slammed a chain into his neck and used it to drag him upright. He looked so much better on his knees, looking up at her. You weren't half bad. She crooned down at him, eyes aglow. It's been a while since I enjoyed myself this much, but playtime is over. Her fingers tightened around the chain, willing him to obey. Be a good boy and roll over, won't you? Quote dot 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 quote. His silence made her angry. She wanted to hear him scream. Ah, there it was at last. That was the expression she wanted to see. The shock. The pain. The ah. The moment he realized she was better, that he was going to lose. His shoulders started to shake, not with sobs as she had first expected, nor pleas and whimpers for mercy, but something else entirely. The grey ghost of a smile tugged at his whiskered cheeks. Was he? No. Surely not. Have you finally lost your mind? Nah. He giggled again, I just realized why the Shinigami sent me to this world. Shinigami. No matter. It meant nothing. Any last words? She wasn't prepared for the grin that followed. A few. He smiled up at her, and despite the blood, she was stricken by just how pure that smile still was. I haven't had this much fun in ages. What did you say your name was? A chill shot down her spine. She hadn't. She really shouldn't. There was no point, for dead men told no tales. And yet, 
Quote dot dot dot. Makima. All right, Miss Makima. He nodded once, rattling his chain in her grasp. Let me give ya some advice. Naruto hummed and beckoned her closer with his remaining arm. Against her better judgment, she leaned in. The next time you fight someone like me, her victim rasped out one last hoarse little laugh. Dot aim for the head. His body blazed into golden flame, almighty heat made manifest. Her chain shattered in its wake. It was her one and only warning before all hell broke loose. He grew back his limbs in an instant. She didn't see them but she felt them. Because he swept her feet and drove an open palm into her stomach. A hand snapped up and caught her by the throat in midair, clawed fingers biting into her windpipe. She choked, briefly surprised by his speed then found herself airborne. A whisper of motion behind her and then her spine snapped in half as clenched knuckles smashed down on her like the fist of an angry god. A plume of shattered stone and decimated dirt sprayed upward but she never saw it, because the impact was still driving her down, beneath stone and bedrock, cratering the docks. Water rushed in. She thrashed upright in it with a gasp, spluttered for air. Her gaze glimpsed movement in the smoke, and took aim at him again. Bang. A ruined log clattered to the floor at her feet, horribly pulped. Her eyes bulged, unable to comprehend. What? Someone whistled behind her. You're too slow. A sea of smoke swarmed around her. She whirled, ready for an attack. Dot, dot, dot. Dot and found herself gazing at a horde of scantily clad blonde women wearing nothing but smoke. Sexy jutsu. Makima blinked. She blinked hard. Quote dot dot dot. Sorry, I don't swing that way. A. Eh? Figured. The lead blonde blew her a kiss. Made for a hell of a distraction though. The ground erupted beneath her feet and the real Naruto came barreling through in an almighty uppercut. Clenched knuckles found her chin, driving her teeth together with an awful click. From there, everything dissolved into a red slurry of violence. He didn't fear anything, did he? He just kept coming. She couldn't even keep up with him now, blocking only broke her limbs. She used all her tricks. All her tools. Every devil she had under contract. For all the good it did her. Naruto gave her. Pets. All the attention they were due. Which was to say none at all. His clones ripped through them like they weren't even there. And then. Quite suddenly. He was upon her. Naruto gave her no time to aim. Slapped her hand aside. And slammed her down into the street. Scrambling her brains in her skull like eggs on a hot sidewalk. Pain snarled up the back of her head then began to recede until he repeated the process and smashed her down yet again. Once, twice, thrice. Every time she began to heal he smashed her down yet again. Did he even notice the innocent lives he was taking? Probably not. His hand tightened around her throat and slammed her down again. He had her. They both knew it. Stalemate. She couldn't kill him, but he couldn't kill her, either. As though sensing that very thought, the bemused blonde beamed down at her. There are ways to win without killing your opponent, ya you know. He took his hand from her throat and beamed down at her, pressed both hands together, finger to finger. Isn't that right, Kurama? The world blurred and he was gone. Makima sat up, massaging her throat with one hand, blinking in mild curiosity. What was it this time? An illusion, she hadn't thought him the type. Darkness loomed around her. Miles of inky blackness and dark dank water as far as the eye could see. Were they still on the wharf? He'd brought her to some sort of wide open space that she didn't recognize and damn needle she couldn't see. Something stirred in the darkness ahead of her. Something large. Something massive. Bigger than an entire city. Something that dwarfed her so utterly she could barely begin to comprehend it. Hello, little devil. That deep sonorous voice issued forth from the giant fox before her. You're playing with the big boys now. She had seen monsters. She had seen devils. She was one. This exceeded all that. This was old. This was ancient. This was beyond her. She had a split second to realize the enormity of her blunder before the beast moved and when it did, she couldn't. A clawed finger stabbed into her skull, the point of which pierced her temple. 
Blood sluiced down her face. There was no pain, nor was there an end. But there was sensation. Information rushed in. Memories. Myriad. She saw. She heard. She felt. Too large too big too much. Hurts. Doesn't it? Naruto reappeared in her peripheral vision and tapped a finger to his skull. I'm told Biju comprehend time differently compared to people. His voice rose over the ringing in her ears, the voices, sounds and sights sing-songing merrily at her. Kurama's lived for hundreds of years. He's seen it all. Done it all. And he's sharing all that information with you. His head tilted further. You can barely comprehend my words right now, much less move at the moment. That's good. I want you to watch this. Blue light snarled to life in his palm. It was a struggle to see it over the sheer information bombarding her brain, but see it she did. Because you see, it was death. A keening sphere larger than the last, rimmed with rings of light. He held it out to her now, and though she couldn't move enough to flinch, something in her quailed at the sight of it all the same. This here, is a recentrican. Naruto's voice rose over the keening whine in her ears. It attacks its target on the cellular level. I've built upon and improved it over the years. One hit from this thing, and you'll be gone for good. He closed his fist around it. I can kill you, if push comes to shove, but that's the thing. I don't have to. He spread his arms with a smile. All I have to do is keep you here, in our seal, bombarding you with information. Forever, or at least until you see my side of things. He stepped over his partner's paw and stood over her, casting her in his shadow. Now, then, blink once if you understand me. She blinked slowly, sluggishly. Blink again if you want to spend the rest of your life here. What could she say to that? She knew. Nothing at all. He had her. Checkmate. Now, then, I think I'll take a page from your book. You told me to roll over earlier, didn't you? Naruto caught her by the tie and yanked in her in to growl at her. Be a good girl and sit. Makima sat. A. N. On there we have it. Makima meeting something, someone she couldn't control. Would you like this to continue? Moreover, would you like weekly updates? Ya yeah or nay? By all means let me know. So, in the immortal words of Atlas. Review, would you kindly? And enjoy the previews. If this becomes a story, of course. Previews. And what do you want? Were they bantering, now, as they cuddled? Oh, well, she supposed she could indulge him. I want an idea world, without fear, death, and bad movies. Naruto tilted his head. That last one was oddly specific. She shrugged. We all want what we want. Is that so? He gave her a deadpan look. What if I want you to stop? Makima couldn't help but titter a little at that. I'm afraid that option isn't on the table. A blonde brow quirked as he placed a fist against his chin. I could kick your ass again. How that for tabling it? You're amusing, but I'm starting to lose my patience. Sit. Power sat. Now be a good boy and die. Makima. No. Ah. Not even a little. Naruto began to tap his foot. Dot boo. She dropped her victim with a sigh. Denji, my man, trust me when I say you don't wanna stick it in crazy. Ain't that what you're doing? Maybe, but the difference is as I can beat Makima's ass if she does something stupid. I've done so several times. Here, let me tell you a story. So let me get this straight. Devils are a thing in this world. Makima hummed a little. They are. And you're one of them. I am. She shifted her weight ever so slightly on the bed, quietly reveling in the annoyed noise Naruto made as she cuddled up against him. That's a secret few know these days. Her hand traced his chest lightly, fingers running the length of his ribs. I'll thank you to keep it quiet. Look, I don't mind, it's just that I kinda expected you to have. Dot you know. She tilted her head mildly bemused. Have horns and a tail. And... Naruto arched an eyebrow. What do you want? Oh, were they bantering, now, while they cuddled? She supposed she could indulge him. It wasn't often she lost a fight, let alone indulged in something like this. Cuddling with one's clothes on was something of a novel sensation for her. 
It had been a long while since she'd been genuinely honest with someone, too. If you must know, she rolled over to look him in the eye, I want an idea world, without fear, death, and bad movies. Naruto snorted. That last one was oddly specific. She shrugged. We all want what we want. There's more to it, isn't there? Clever boy. To that end, she began stroking his chin. I need to obtain a certain chainsaw devil. He possesses the unique ability to erase any devil he slaughters. If he's alone, that'll make things easier. If he's made a contract with someone, I'll need to break them in order to acquire him. And all this is for the sake of your dream. Hmm. She bit his thumb, trying to get a reaction out of him. It is. Is that so? He drew his hand back and gave her a deadpan look. What if I want you to stop? Such a pure one. Makima couldn't help but titter a little at that. I'm afraid that option isn't on the table. A blonde brow quirked as he placed a fist against his chin. I could kick your ass again. How that for tabling it? You could, she allowed, but a fight between us now would only make the two of us look bad. Surely you don't want that. I'd hate to have to report this to the chief cabinet secretary. Don't much care what people think of me, lady. He really didn't, did he? Naruto wasn't broken, not by any means or measure, but he clearly had more than a few, what was the darn term Kishibe was so fond of using? A few screws loose. Ah, that was the one. She'd already explained the concept of devils to him in loose terms, and he'd been mildly amused by it all, so much so that she couldn't help but lend credence to his earlier statement. I know why the Shinigami sent me to this world. He'd said those words earlier during their battle and now they rang true once more. Was he truly not a devil? but a warrior from another world? If so, how had he wound up here? What was his world like? Did they have devils over there as well, or something far worse? The prospect intrigued Makima more than she cared to admit. Not nearly so much as the legendary Chainsaw Man, but it was a change, something new, something different, unexpected even. She had to have him. She needed to make him hers. She must. By hook or crook, she would turn the tables until she was the one holding the leash, not him. Fair enough. In the end, she decided to table her curiosity and let him fiddle with her unbound hair. You still smell like nine different beasts, you know. For some reason, that made Naruto smile. I'm surprised you can tell. What can I say? I have a keen sense of smell. I noticed. Hmm. She nuzzled his neck luxuriating in the feel of him and the annoyed noise he made. How would you like to work for public safety with me? I can promise you a fantastic wage. One of his eyes swept her way, mildly annoyed. Not under you. Aha. The hook was baited. Now to reel him in. Are you certain? She took his right hand in hers and guided it to her bosom. The job has the best benefits and I can be very, persuasive. A blonde brow rose. Dot and absolutely nothing else. It'll take more than cop in a feel to win me over ya know. Is that so? Makima's opinion of Naruto Uzumaki rose several notches in that moment. Seemed he wasn't easily won over by the promise of sex, then. Good. She'd be disappointed if he were. Easy though it might be to use them, she found herself secretly disliking those who were easily led by their lust. Partners, then. She amended her initial offer. Just think of the good you can do. You mean working together as equals. Don't make me laugh. Those whiskered cheeks dimpled in a devil-may-care smile, and for a fleeting instant Makima could have sworn something incredibly ancient spoke through him, there was something in his tone that gave it away. Ordinarily I'd agree, but we both know you're not as powerful as you pretend to be. And didn't that just gall? A brief spark of anger flashed through her, quickly quelled. You enjoy pushing my buttons, don't you? Naruto clasped both hands behind his head and grinned at her. It's one of the few joys I have in this world, yes. Hmm. Snarky. Two could play that game. It had been, so long since she'd actually enjoyed a bit of banter with someone. But the last word would be hers. Dot one way or another. She sat up tugged down her tie, and rolled her shoulders. 
Buttons popped and her shirt pulled at her waist, exposing a black lace bra, snug against her bosom. Her erstwhile what was he? A rival? A potential lover? Maybe her master? Blonde glanced her up and down but didn't take the bait. He was much too smart for that. You just have to be in control, don't you? It's who I am. She shrugged one shoulder, idly toying with the bra strap there. Control is a key facet of my life, whether that involves controlling, or being controlled. So, are you going to sit there or... His hand rose and stopped just short of her face, fingers splayed, a clear gesture to stop. Makima did, just shy of unclasping her bra and bearing herself to him entirely. This whiskered warrior had impressive restraint, she'd give him that. How rude. She feigned a pout. Here I am offering myself to you, and you're turning me down. For a moment, just an instant really, his eyes flashed red. On my terms, not yours. Terms. Now those she could understand. And what terms would those be? Let me see here, he began counting off the fingers on his right hand. Ideally, I'd like to take you out first, buy you flowers, get to know you, treat you to dinner, maybe see a movie, that sort of thing. He had her at movies. So he intended to court her properly. Amusing. No one had done that before. Oh, there had been attempts, but this one actually piqued her interest. Today truly was a day of firsts, it seemed. Remarkable, really. She was quite confident in her charms, she'd wooed both men and women before. Naruto was the first soul in recent memory to actively resist her like this. Aki would have been eating out her hand by now, to say nothing of Himeno, Kobeni and the rest. Even poor power would have been putty in her hands. Yet still, Naruto Uzumaki resisted. It made her feel, warm. How quaint. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Quick as a flash, she stood, throwing her shirt back on. She's a strange, surly little thing, but I think the two of you would get along splendidly. Oi, Naruto made no move whatsoever to rise from her bed, I didn't say I was working with you, yet. She peered over her shoulder. But you are amenable to it. Help me with my hair, won't you? A long-suffering sigh drawled through the air. Persistent little thing, aren't you? His fingers began to thread through her hair with surprising gentleness. She craned her neck back to smile at him. Does this mean I win? Keep dreaming, sweetheart. Point zero point zero point zero. Makima brought him to her office readily enough, but not to her superiors. For that at least, Naruto was grateful. Not that he'd ever admit it. He wasn't sure he wanted to meet with the leaders of this so-called public safety, given that he hadn't yet agreed to work for Makima, much less with her. If she thought showing him a few fresh faces was going to sway him, well, it made him curious, but he wasn't about to crumble so easily. That said, her office was a surprisingly spartan space all things considered, relatively devoid of ornamentation. Makima didn't strike him as the sentimental sort. He didn't miss her sidelong glances when she thought he wasn't looking either. Sneaky girl wasn't sneaky at all. Really, he was blonde not blind. Tough. If she really craved unconditional affection that bloody badly, she should get herself a few dogs or something. Ah, perfect timing. Makima sat behind her desk suddenly, drawing him from his reverie. She's here. The door crashed open and, she came barreling through like a ballistic missile. He'd sensed the newcomer long before her bombastic entrance. Not big surprise. Prostrate yourself, human. A darling girl with bright eyes and pink hair stormed in and struck a triumphant pose. For I am power. Are you to be my so-called partner? Quote dot 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 quote. A beat of silence fell over the office. Naruto tiled his head a few clicks to the right, mildly perplexed. Dot are those horns. Makima hummed behind. Did I mention that she's a fiend? He sighed. You did not, no. Oops. Makima's newfound sass aside, Naruto found himself mildly intrigued by the newcomer. Well, wonders of wonders. So this was a fiend. He'd heard they were each distinctive in their own rights and this, power, certainly wasn't the quiet type. 
he wasn't surprised when she marched right up to him and gave him a good long look. This one certainly lacked fear if nothing else. Why do you stare at me so? She grinned suddenly, thumbing her chin. Could it be that you are afraid? A muscle jumped in his jaw. Thunk. His hand descended upon Power's skull and struck right between her horns in a ruthless karate chop. Hey. Always wanted to do that. Ow. Poor Power recoiled with a yelp, cradling the rising welt he'd left behind. What was that for? For implying something stupid. He lowered his still steaming hand. Think before you speak. She conjured a blade of blood to her hand. I'll kill you. Kurama chortled softly in his head. You can try. Now, now, power. Makima steepled both fingers and laid her chin atop them, her smile never once wavering. Naruto speaks with my authority. You should treat him the same respect you give me. After all, you wouldn't want to lose your head now, would you? Naruto expected many things in that instant. Anger. An explosion of rage. But why? Instead the fiery fiend wrung her hands and surprised him with a subdued whine. You're already scary enough. Why are there two of you now wait? What's that smell? She gave up on her rant, leaned in and sniffed him, much to his chagrin. That scent. Dot are you a fiend as well? Naruto flicked her forehead, drawing another wine fro her. No. Her eyes lit up. Then are you to be my partner? A sigh. Also a no. She flung up her hands. Then why do you torment me so, human? Perhaps I really should slay you and be done with this. Naruto frowned. You're certainly something, but I'm starting to lose my patience. Sit. Killing intent flashed out, blasting the fiend's hair back in an unseen breeze. For a moment, he wondered if the surly fiend would listen. And then, much to his great surprise, power sat. Dot. Dot dot. Dot HMM. I wonder if, on a whim, Naruto held out his right hand. Pa. Power's hand smacked into his. Behind him, Makima began to giggle. A. N. On there we have it. Would you like this to continue? Moreover, would you like weekly updates? Ya or nay? By all means let me know. So, in the immortal words of Atlas. Review, would you kindly. And enjoy the previews. You'll see them soon enough. If this remains a story, of course. Y'all ain't prepared for power. Previews. Help me find Miaui. Dot who or what the hell is a Miaui? Were you not listening? Miaui is my cat. You help people, don't you, human? So help me. Ha. Who do you think you are, giving me orders, oi? He glared at her until she faltered. Pee pretty please. You're one of those mature, teasing types aren't you? Himeno winked at him with her good eye. Bingo. Right, you're going to be a handful. Is this everyone? Well, we're missing a few at the moment. One look at Kobeni and he made up his mind. All right. His hands clamped down on the skittish girl's shoulders, effectively anchoring her in pace. I'm adopting you. Way. You don't have to call me, Papa, or anything, but I'm gonna help you deal with those nerves of yours, okay? Denji tilted his head. Wait, if Makima's basically the mom, does that make Naruto the dad? Aki absolutely choked on his spit. How can you even say that? I mean it's obvious, ain't it? They got that parent vibe. Do you have any idea how much trouble you've caused me? Now be a good boy and die. Makima. No. Ah. Not even a little. Naruto began to tap his foot. Dot boo. She dropped her victim with a sigh. Denji, my man, trust me when I say you don't want to stick it in crazy. Ain't that what you're doing? Yes, Naruto flicked his forehead, but the difference is as I can beat Makima's ass if she does something stupid. I've done so several times. Here, let me tell you a story. Oi, 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 just what the hell are you? Annoyed is what I am. Naruto dug the bullet out of his forehead with a sigh. Really? Guns? You thought guns would stop me? I'll let you in on a little secret. Makima's pretends to be nice. I don't. He made to run a hand through his hair, only to realize he'd gotten blood all over it. You just ruined a perfectly good suit and tried to kill Himeno. Huh. 
The world was tipsy. Was he drunk after all? Time to die. He swept past and tore a gunman's head clean off their shoulders. The girl panicked and raised her right hand. Snake. I don't think so. Karama. Bite. Help me retrieve Miaoi. Dot. Dot dot. Dot dot dot. Naruto took a long drink of his orange juice. Drained it down to the very last drop. From there he set the glass down, tilted his head back in his chair, closed his eyes, and pinched the bridge of his nose for good measure. It did little to stifle his oncoming migraine, but it made him feel a little better regardless. From there, he took a deep breath, opened the newspaper in his lap and turned to the next page. Oh, hey, they were opening a new orphanage downtown. Maybe he could convince Makima to pay a visit with him. A hand tore the newspaper away, distracting him from that pleasant thought. Don't ignore me, human. He looked down to find the face of a certain exasperating fiend only an inch from his. Makima's place really did have a stellar view from way up here. One could see almost the entire city. A shame power was ruining it. I was reading that. He heaved a sigh. How did you get up here, anyway? The blood fiend leaned back and planted both hands on her hips with a triumphant grin. I climbed. All the way up here. Wow. Karama whistled. Points for persistence. His lips pursed in a thin line. Not helping right now, fuzzball. But never mind that. The horned girl leaned forward with a growl flashing pointed teeth at him. Help me get Miaoi back. That actually got a blink out of him. It was a strange request, one he'd not expected, much less from power herself. It also begged another, far more important question. What in the sage's name is a Miaoi? Powder slammed both hands down on the table. Miaoi is Miaoi, foolish human. Silly girl. That doesn't answer my question. Were you not listening? She gripped him by the shoulders and gave him a vicious shake. Miaoi is my cat. You help people, don't you, human? Makima said so. Now help me. Inwardly, he seethed. Makima meddling again. Outwardly, however, a blonde brow rose. Ha. Who do you think you are, giving me orders, oi? While her anger might have gotten the better of her, fear always was, and always would be, a sure bet. Power's eyes went wide. Masori. Not good enough. He flicked her forehead. You interrupted my morning. It was a very nice morning. Had Power a tail, it would have been tucked between her legs right about now. I'm really sorry. Still she didn't run. He'd give her credit for that. Did, Miaoi, mean that much to her? He glared at her until she faltered. Just how durable are you? She preened. Plenty. Then you won't die if I kick you off this balcony. Of course I won't. I'm not some weak who. Boot. Point zero point zero point zero. A terrified cry echoed across the city. Aki looked up, cigarette in hand. What's that idiot doing now? Point zero point zero point zero. Makima tilted her head. Power wants you to find her cat. Demanded. More like. Naruto flopped down into the bed beside her. Booted her off the balcony for it. Credit where it was due. Makima managed to control herself as her body tucked in tight against his, if only just. It was tempting terribly. Horribly tempting. To just jump Naruto then and there. Chain him to the wall. And have her way with him. But she mustn't. He would resist which would lead to a fight between then, and she knew full well how that would end, just as it had before. Dot, 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 with her down on her knees before him. Hmm, maybe that wouldn't be so bad after all no, focus. She must keep control. Come to think of it, she hummed, tracing her fingers over his chest. She did mention that little creature of hers being taken by the bad devil shortly after I captured her. Naruto made an annoyed noise and rolled over. So she wasn't lying, then. She was not. She moved with him, draping an arm over him. You see, power is very much like her namesake. She has little respect for the weak and powerless. Continue to prove yourself to her as you did before, or she'll try to walk all over her. He palmed his face and heaved a sigh. Easy for you to say. Would you believe there was a time when she didn't listen to me, either? Really? 
He took his hand away to squint at her. How'd you solve that debacle? The ghost of a smile crossed her lips. I did something rather similar to what you're doing what right? She steepled her hands and laid her chin atop them. I disciplined her. She's quite submissive to me nowadays. Nice try. His brow furrowed. I know what you're up to. She tilted her head. Am I up to something? Such a suspicious warrior he was. Makima. All right. She wrapped her arms around him, gently chaining his body to hers with her limbs. I want you to understand that true happiness can only be found by siding with me. To that end, I'm willing to grant you free reign to do as you please, with whomever you please. I'm still not working under you. She smiled. But you're willing to work for me. With you. He held up a finger. Possibly. There's a difference. Dot dot dot. I suppose so. It was a step in the right direction. She snuggled closer and pressed her ear to his chest. You have a strong heartbeat. It's strange. You're definitely not devil, but neither are you entirely human, either. I could say the same for you. He laid in atop her head, fingers idly stroking her hair, it almost felt like he was petting her. You've got a lot on your plate, don't you? It's nothing I can't handle. Such was the burden of leadership. Being in charge meant dealing with the politics of public safety, answering to the higher-ups, negotiating with government, foreign powers and the like. Few knew that she was the only thing standing between them in complete chaos. Society still functioned because of her. Because she kept everything under control. She was a necessary evil. Naruto would understand that someday. Despite that, she came back to herself with a start, realizing he was still talking. You want me to help you. Your cooperation would be appreciated, yes. She dared a quick kiss against his chin, drawing a grumpy grumble from him, but he didn't shove her away this time. If you did choose to help me, you'd be doing humanity a great service, even if you feel the need to keep your abilities under wraps. Is that what you actually think I'm doing? Naruto's chuckle and the grin he gave her was slightly, concerning. That's adorable. She wouldn't mind getting a closer look at that grin as he pushed up against a wall in bad brain. Behave. If that's the case, I wouldn't be opposed to you showing off a little. But not too much. Will my fists be enough? He had a tendency to speak roughly when he was excited, she noted. Makima didn't dislike that, he spoke plainly, did what he wanted, and was clearly beyond her ability to control, dot for now. At best she could give him a nudge and even then he wouldn't be forced into anything. An idea dawned, delightfully insidious. She leaned into him. Shall we make a wager, then? Naruto tiled his head. Betting against me, now. Not very smart of you. On the contrary. Her fingers fiddled with the buttons of his shirt, idly toying with them, but not releasing them. If you agree to my little gamble this once, I'd be willing to go on that, date, you mentioned. I'll even lend you some of my power to sweeten the pot, as you humans say. But in exchange, Naruto squinted at her, not trusting for an instant. Clever boy. In exchange, Makima grabbed him by the face and slammed her forehead against his. I want you to break the bad devil. She spoke slowly and purposefully. No contracts with him. No sparing him. Only death. Power was one of her tools after all. One of her toys. She and possibly Naruto alone should have control over her. No others. Certainly not some upstart devil. Really, bats, bats. That was a minor fear at best. The fear of blood, now, that should be far more powerful. Power never would have been caught off guard by such a weakling had she taken herself seriously. If not for that cat, she never would have been taken unawares. An example must be set. Aren't you just as vulnerable? An awful voice her own, crooned in her ear. Power has her cat, yet you have na. Makima scowled and stomped that traitorous thought down into the bloody pulp it deserved to be. Dot dot dot. I'd also like you to tame power. She retorted in turn. That would be more than enough. Naruto looked like he'd sucked on a lemon. You must be joking. I don't need a contract. I know you don't. Just humor me this once. As for power, 
Breaking her to Yerwal wouldn't be hard, and it would prevent incidents like this morning. She wriggled against him until he was the one holding her, his hands resting on her hips as she faced. It left her feeling oddly vulnerable, a most pleasant sensation. She's the blood devil. Retrieve her cat and let her drink some of your blood, she'll be head over heels for you. Naruto fell silent at that. Strange. Had she said something wrong? In my world, he began slowly, I was a shinobi. It's another word for ninja. I was good at that. Not at first, it took a while, but once I got the hang of it. I did it, and I did it well. I was built to be, this. He held up a hand before her face and his entire arm burned a bright, beautiful gold, like the light of heaven itself. From the moment I was born, I was meant to be this. You could even say it's my purpose. That's good. She stroked his cheek. A purpose is like love, it's always important to have in life. It is. He nodded slowly. But now you want me to live my life by your mandates. His hand came up to cup hers. To dedicate my life according to your mandates. To only ever do what you ask of me, be what you tell me to be, jump as high as you say. Makima. That's not love. His fingers gripped hers, preventing her from pulling away. That ain't love at all. Your idea of love is so far removed from the very concept of love. Dot it's honestly a little sad. I disagree. Her lips pursed. Control is the purest form of love. It shows someone how much you care. Her baffling blonde berserker shook his head. You're doing it again, Makima. She glared at him. What am I doing exactly, Naruto? Deliberately misunderstanding my words. The smile he granted her seemed almost. Dot sad. Do you even know what it's like to be a human? Of course not. She granted him a long, languid look, slightly confused. I'm a devil. I fear nothing. He chuckled roughly. Ya yeah, know, it's awfully easy to forget that sometimes, looking at you. Going to be clever, was he? Two could play that game. What do you fear, Naruto? His face closed down. Oh, dear, had she overstepped? Nothing. He gave her a blank look. That's what I'm afraid of. You're not making any sense. Stop being obtuse. Help me understand. I just told you. Those deep blue eyes threatened to swallow Makima whole, to drown her in a sea of emotions she couldn't comprehend. I fear nothing. She couldn't bring herself to look away from those dark depths, no matter how much she might wish to. As in nothingness. Being no one. Being helpless. Being alone. Understandable. No entity in heaven or hell liked being alone. Oh. That's a rather common fear among humans and devils. We all fear such. She hid a smile behind her hand. If there were a loneliness devil, I suspect it would be rather powerful. For instance, did you know? Even power fears being alone. Naruto recoiled. That crazy girl. She only fears you and me. A laugh. Does she? Perhaps you should ask her. Maybe I will. Aha. Victory. So you'll help her, then. I'm considering it. He gave her an even look. On one condition. Makima perked up, mildly intrigued by his request. Name it. I'd like to ask you a question. She waved him on. All too easy. Do you really think controlling someone equates to love? Odd. Makima did and said as much. What other answer was there? He shook his head. So you weren't lying, then. You really do believe that. Her smile thinned, edging close to a frown. Then what is it? What do you call love, Naruto? That's easy. He threaded his fingers through hers. I call it being human. I'll teach ya later sometime. But before I forget. Without warning, he sat up. Makima turned to face him quickly. He beat her to the punch in an instant. Strong arms closed around her, holding her close. His chin came down over her shoulder. She froze, terribly startled. You're not the only one who can play the touch-feely game, his mouth brushed the outer lobe of her right ear, she could feel his smile in the quirk of his lips. I learned from a master. Warm breath ghosted the back of her neck, quickening her pulse. All's fair in love and war. Her heart damn near skipped a beat when he pressed a kiss atop her head. 
And which is this? His sunny smile as he drew away said it all. I'll let you figure that one out. He bounded off the bed and leapt out the window with a whoop. Makima was left to slump down in her bed, heart hammering. Why was her face so red? Yikes. Point zero point zero point zero. Power yelped as a hand plucked her up by the ankle and dragged her out the dumpster. Dangled upside down, she blinked blearily up at her savior. Naruto's bright blue eyes beamed down at her. His smile was wonderfully sharp. Where's your cat? Point zero point zero point zero. The house awaited power. Standing at the end of a worn dirt road rimmed by telephone poles, it looked harmless enough to any passerby. Old. Two. There was only the one door from this angle, place looked like it had seen better days. Of course it had. One could only reach this place by taking several buses, and even then the trip took the better part of an hour to bring them to the outskirts. It had not been a comfortable ride. No one thought to come this far out into the boonies, indeed, for all intensive purposes this place appeared to be abandoned. Appeared being the operative word. He's in there, is he? She flicked a quick glance Naruto's way and fought down a shiver. You can sense him, terrifying though you are, it seems your instincts are sharp. A grunt was his reward as he hefted his staff. Do you wanna be this close? Don't want him using that cat as a hostage on us. This was it, her moment. One way or another, she would see Miyawi free. If Naruto was anything like Makima scary scary scary, he wouldn't let his guard down on a whim meaning she wouldn't be able to knock him out with a blood hammer to the back of the head. He was much too sharp for that, which was both good and bad, good because she was afraid to face him head on and bad because she might not be able to get Miyawi back without a proper sacrifice. And then Naruto looked at her, really looked at her, as he hadn't before. For a terrifying instant, she could have sworn she saw a giant crimson fox looming over his shoulders. Much to her horror, said Beast leaned in and smiled at her. Don't even think about it. Power jerked back with a yelp. What was that? The wild-whiskered warrior didn't deign to explain. Instead, he offered her his hand. Power, if this is going to work, you need to trust me. I won't be able to fight if I have to worry about you stabbing me in the back. Power recoiled despite herself. Trust a human, as if she could do such a thing. She recoiled from the very concept of it. And yet, those deep blue eyes did not judge her. Yes, there was a tiny tinge of annoyance glimmering in their depths, but none of the eerie blankness she'd come to associate with Makima. His emotions it seemed, were something of an open book. That should have put her at ease. It didn't. Somehow, it only terrified her all the more. He could kill her a thousand times over and she knew she wouldn't be able to stop him. There was no point in even trying. Don't you hate me? Naruto blinked once. Why should I bear any hatred towards someone obviously weaker than myself? All I feel for you is pity. He looked up to the sky. She followed his gaze and found a crow wheeling above. Strange bird. Why was it here? Makima. Eh? Naruto thumbed his cheek. Nosy girl. Yes she wants to keep an eye on me. Rolling his shoulders. He shrugged off his jacket and handed it to her. She didn't even have the wherewithal to squawk in surprise, such was her shock. Watch closely, now, he warned her. I'm only gonna do this once. And then his body began to burn. Every fiber of Naruto shone a bright molten gold as though lit from within, setting his very hair aflame. His body burned with black marks. His eyes snapped into a shade of wild amber bearing savage cross-shaped pupils that seemed to see the entire world at once. And his scent, changed. What was once one became eight, no, nine. It fascinated power, terrified her, aroused her in equal measure. What are you, the fire devil or something? She shrank back, quivering in place. A natural disaster. One of the primordials. Nope. He winked an amber eye her way. No devils here. He flickered forward at speed. The door to the house slammed open, then he was back out again, holding a cage in his arms and said cage contained. I'm guessing this is yours. He thrust it into her arms. It purred. Maru. 
A delighted gasp burst forth from Power's lips. Meowie. Wait, where was the bad devil? The house burst behind them, erupting as the creature in question emerged, thrashing about with his one arm. He was just as large as she remembered, and still just as wounded. Even down a limb, it nevertheless fought its way free from the dilapidated housing and lumbered their way. Bletch. His face was just as ugly as she remembered. But she wouldn't let him take Miaoi again. No. Never. She'd sooner die. In a matter of moments his great bulk towered over them both, casting them in his shadow. Power found herself shrinking back despite herself. So you found a friend, did you, blood devil? His very voice set her teeth on edge. A pity. Now you'll both die together. Naruto quirked a golden, burning brow at the bat. Hey, this guy's weak. How the hell did you lose to him? He snuck up on me and took me owie. She whirled, glaring at him. I wasn't prepared. A massive fist filled her vision. Shit. She'd let her guard down. Hey, now. A golden palm diverted it with ease and flipped the bad devil over his shoulder, sending the towering creature tumbling to the ground. We were having a nice conversation there. Don't interrupt. The monstrosity righted itself with a snarl. You dare defy me, human. I'm about to do a whole lot more than that. He dug a hand in his pocket. Makima told me you devils recover from drinking blood. That's true. Power nodded numbly. Yeah, we do. Why? Good. He withdrew a large vial of blood from his pocket and flung it at the bad devil's feet. Drink up, monster. That's my blood in their blood. Should be more than enough to grow back your arm and bring you back to full power. I don't want you making any excuses before I kill you. It hesitated. Do you think me a fool? No, the whiskered warrior drawled, I think you're dead. You just haven't realized it yet. Die as you are now, or die at full strength. He slashed a thumb across his throat. Your choice. I ain't got any mercy in me for a monster like you. Are you stupid or something? Power rounded on him, clutching Miaoi's cage to her chest for dear life. Why would you give him such a thing? You'll only make him stronger. Rather than retort immediately, Naruto looked up to the sky, where the crow could still be seen, now perched upon a telephone pole. It was still watching them. Well, you see, he dug a finger in his ear, I promised Makima a show. Dot and if this guy's as bad as I think he is, he doesn't deserve a quick death. A low roar behind him put paid to that statement. Delicious. Power whirled with a start. What a feast. The bat devil loomed large, his mangled arm rapidly regenerating as he cackled, body bursting with power. I've never tasted blood like this before. Was it just her, or was he larger than before? Foolish human. You shall rue the day you crossed me. Naruto reappeared before him in a rush of gold. All the world held its breath. And then. You're wide open. Three fist-shaped holes appeared in Bad Devil's lower torso, perfectly spaced in shape of a triangle. He crashed backward with a wheeze, struggling to hold his innards in, but only for a moment. The wounds began to heal almost instantaneously. Wait. That didn't make any sense. Devils shouldn't be able to heal that fast without blood and he'd already drank. So that's what my blood does to devils. Naruto thumbed his chin, considering him. Interesting. I'll have to be careful going forward. Arrogant oaf. The bat devil righted itself with a ponderous groan. With this power I cannot lose. Wham. A spinning kick sent him skidding across the ground. He was still tumbling when a second kick launched him skywards. Once there, a third found his spine and drove him back to the ground once more. He left a lovely bat-shaped crater behind. Power found herself applauding despite her fear. She'd better. That might be her if she pissed Naruto off again. No, thank you. And if this was a little cathartic after the hell that bait brute had put her through, well. She wasn't complaining. Catharsis, thy name is Power. The bat devil dragged itself out the crater, missing an eye and several teeth besides. Damn you. Naruto alighted atop his head and stomped him down into the muck with a merry hum. You're lucky I don't feel like using a Rasengan or Rasenshuriken today. The bat devil reared back and bucked, 
momentarily dislodging him. Almost immediately it drew in a deep breath, lungs expanding. Dot and aimed at her. Power tensed. She needn't have. Naruto reappeared before her and held up his right hand. Stay behind me. He winked over his shoulder. This might get a little rough. An explosion of sound followed as the beast screamed. Slicing wind spattered on either side of them, parting before his golden palm to savage the ground around them for miles in every direction. Power gave no thought to herself but rather curled around Miaoi's cage and held tight, trying her best to protect her feline friend from the stinging plume of dust that followed. A painful cut opened on her shoulder when she tried to peek out and see, to which she hissed angrily and ducked back under Naruto's protection once more. Lesson learned. Do you have any idea who I am? Through ringing ears, she heard the bad devil bray at the two of them. I am the bad devil. Humans flee when they hear the sound of my wings. They fear the night because I dwell in it. All cower before my might biwak. Power didn't see Naruto move he was much too fast for her eyes to track but she certainly heard him as the smokescreen blasted. When she looked up, she found the bad devil doubling over, clutching its torso. She grinned despite herself. Nice punch. Hey bad devil. I'm Naruto. Gonna kill ya now. His lips quirked in a small satisfied smirk. There it was again, that quiet terrifying confidence of his. I've got power watching, so I'm gonna show off a little. He dug his fist in, drawing an agonized gasp from his prey. Hope you don't mind. After all, you like toying with you prey, right? Impudent brat. You're just another victim of the week for me. Another meal. A stinging backhand sent him sprawling face down in the muck. So it's only fair that I toy with you a little, ya know. The bat devil lunged at him with an enraged roar, swinging wildly without purpose. Naruto swayed left, right now, then left again, weaving his way closer. Bounding between blows, his fist came up as he flitted from one foot to the other and for a moment, just a brief moment, Power found herself reminded of something she'd once seen on the strange devices humans called television. What was it called again? Oh right, she remembered now. Boxing. Naruto waited in. Right hook. Left hook. Body jab. One two three four. He absolutely decimated her fellow devil, beating him black and blue and bloody without remorse. It was complete and utter destruction. Humiliation at its worst. He didn't even let it touch him, didn't permit his opponent even the most basic dignity of landing a single hit, until finally. Power saw the precise moment the bat devil broke. That fear in its eyes, that raw, naked terror. No, I shan't die here. Next time. It backpedaled with a gust of wind and took to the skies in frenzied flight. Naruto flung a hand out after it with a lazy smile, the proverbial fox playing with his meal. Who said you could leave? Chains burst from his outstretched palm to ensnare Bat's arms, and his wings with it. Then he dragged him down. From there, it was a foregone conclusion. Deprived of momentum necessary to fly, the larger devil had a fleeting moment to flail in the air, to scream in absolute horror before it found itself slammed down into the earth once more. Huh. So that's what it feels like to use her power. Naruto glanced at his hand. I could get used to this. Power's smile died an ugly death. That, that was Makima's power. No doubt about it. She recognized those terrifying chains anywhere. He'd made a deal with the devil. Literally. If he'd been a monster before, what kind of beast must he be now that he'd made a contract with her? Nope. No chance. Not fighting him. The bat devil whimpered. What did you do? I struck a bargain. The very air seemed to shiver around the blonde as he intoned the words. Made a deal with Makima, just for today. No fancy explosions, no earth-shattering jutsu. That's right. A wry grin split his face, lending those whiskered cheeks a most menacing air. Just me, Kurama, her power, and my fists. The bat devil doubled over and vomited blood. The moment he did, Naruto grabbed him by the snout, hooked two fingers in the demon's nostril and dragged his face upright. Tell me now, what did you call me? He hauled him closer. Victim of the weak, was it? I'm sorry. 
Naruto stomped down on his head. Apology not accepted. His free hand swung back. Then he began swinging. From there he just kept wailing on him. Right, right, left, right, and right. He hammered home hit after hit until the awful monster finally fell to its knees and ceased all resistance. From there it did the only thing it could. Bat bowed its head and begged for mercy. Please let me go. I'll do whatever you want. I'll even enter into a contract with you. Naruto paused, blood dripping from his fists. And what would the terms of this contract entail? Power stiffened. He wouldn't. Yet such a bargain would surely. I would give you my powers. All of them. Well, that sonic scream of yours did seem pretty cool. The bat raised its head as its eyes shone with hope. Then, his head vanished in a spray of gore, as did the rest of his upper torso a heartbeat later. Dot but I can already do that. Blood rained down and Naruto grimaced beneath it. So this is what devil blood tastes like. Yuck. Power's heart hammered heavily. Thump, 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 thump. Her mouth went absolutely dry. Demons respected strength. It was a well-known fact of both worlds. And what she'd just seen, it terrified her, yes, but it also enticed her. She squirmed a little, hips twisting fro side to side as her legs rubbed together. For saving the Aoi and help me, I'll give you a reward. Anything you want. Naruto scowled at her. Don't want anything. Too bad. Oi. He might have said more then, if he hadn't noticed her grisly shoulder wound. Wait. You're hurt. Did that last attack hit you? This. She tried to shrug, only to wince a little. Tis nothing. I feel no pain. Dot dot dot. I can see the bone. She blanched. Don't tell me that. Dot dot dot. There's a big difference between average blood and my blood. Here. She began to drool. Don't need it. Yes. You do. You're badly hurt. Naruto gave his collar a tug, exposing his neck to her wanting eyes. Here. Have some of mine. I shouldn't. Makima would murder her. She's the one who asked me to share if you got hurt. Did she now? Why? No. None of that mattered. Her self-control shattered. She set Miaoi's cage down and dared a tentative step forward. When he didn't resist, she latched onto his neck and drank deeply. Sweet. That was her first thought as his blood flooded her mouth. It was fire and power and hot and oh gods she couldn't stop she was drunk on it, she wanted more, even after her wound mended, no she needed more, she would do anything for more oh dear sweet blood minaminaminamine. Hey. Hey. Naruto bonked her on the head, causing her to jerk backward reflexively, don't get greedy. That's enough. He noticed her longer, sharper horns. Is that a bad thing? Power dove at him. He tensed, half expecting an attack. It never came. Mine. We are magnanimous. She buried her face in his chest and in tight as she embraced him tightly, arms clenching around his chest. She was trembling, but she didn't dare show it. You did well. His scowl softened, if only somewhat. You were afraid, huh? Afraid? She scoffed. Me. I fear nothing. Oi. He quelled her with a look and she subsided with a whine, but even that couldn't quell her raging emotions. She beamed up at him, sharp teeth flashing in a grin. Shall we mate now? Had he been sitting in a chair, Naruto would have fallen clean out it. As things stood he did a double take. Power. What? That is a thing you humans do, is it not? The act of coupling after a victory. He palmed his face with a sigh. Power. No. Power yes. Mate with me. No. Just no. A n. And powder's gone and gotten herself smitten. All according to Makima's plan, if you can't woo a man with one, woo him with many. Would you like this to continue? Moreover, would you like weekly updates? Ya or nay, by all means let me know. So, in the immortal words of Atlas, review, would you kindly, and enjoy the previews, you'll see them soon enough. If this remains a story, of course, y'all ain't prepared for power. Previews, you're one of those mature, teasing types aren't you? Himeno winked at him with her good eye. Bingo, right, you're going to be a handful. Is this everyone? Well, we're missing a few at the moment. 
One look at Kobeni and he made up his mind. All right. His hands clamped down on the skittish girl's shoulders, effectively anchoring her in pace. I'm adopting you. Way. You don't have to call me, Papa, or anything, but I'm gonna help you deal with those nerves of yours, okay? Oi. Power. Kick his ass. Power didn't need to be told twice. Vengeance shall be mine. Denji tilted his head. Wait. If Makima's basically the mom, does that make Naruto the dad? Aki absolutely choked on his spit. How can you even say that? I mean it's obvious, ain't it? They got that parent vibe, yo. Do you have any idea how much trouble you've caused me? Now be a good boy and die. Makima. No. Ah. Uh, not even a little. Naruto began to tap his foot. Dot boo. She dropped her victim with a sigh. Denji. My man, trust me when I say you don't wanna stick it in crazy. Ain't that what you're doing? Yes. Naruto flicked his forehead, but the difference is as I can beat Makima's ass if she does something stupid. I've done so several times. Here, let me tell you a story. Oi, 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 just what the hell are you? Annoyed is what I am. Naruto dug the bullet out of his forehead with a sigh. Really? Guns? You thought guns would stop me? I'll let you in on a little secret. Makima's pretends to be nice. I don't. He made to run a hand through his hair, only to realize he'd gotten blood all over it. You just ruined a perfectly good suit and tried to kill Himeno. Huh. The world was tipsy. Was he drunk after all? Time to die. He swept past and tore a gunman's head clean off their shoulders. The girl panicked and raised her right hand. Snake. I don't think so. Kurama. Bite. Mate with me. Naruto shut the front door in Power's face, sipped his orange juice, and went about his day. She popped out of the cupboard. Mate with me. He closed it in on her head. Mate. With. Me. When she popped out of the ceiling panel how did she even get up in there? He subsequently booted her off the balcony of his apartment and into the city. Credit where it was due, even that didn't dissuade her. That or she simply had no desire give up. For the rest of the day, she kept appearing in the most inane places, no matter what he did. The floor, the ceiling, even the sink somehow. It was maddening. Finally, he'd had enough, when next she reappeared, he plonked her down on the couch and flicked her forehead. This needs to stop. You don't even know what love is, power. That seemed to give her pause. He dared to hope. In hindsight, he should have known better. Love is doing what I want, when I want, with whom I want. She thrust a finger in his face. And I want you. Now be mine. That phrase sounds a little too clever for you. Where did you read it? In a magazine. She puffed out her chest with pride. Thought so. Despite his best efforts to stay angry with her, he just couldn't. He stroked her head instead, idly caressing her horns with on hand. Had she a tail, he suspected it would have been wagging a mile a minute. What did that say about her personality when he preferred this to the brash, angry girl of yesterday? On a whim, he held out his hand. Pa. Power barked as her hand smacked into his. No, no, no. Naruto shook his head fiercely, purging himself of the momentary urge to tease her. Don't do that. You're a person, Power, not a dog. I'm not. I'm a devil. She latched onto his arm, clinging tight. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just be mine. Please. 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 He tried to be angry with her. He really, truly did. He just couldn't muster it. Why are ya so interested in me anyway? You're strong. A blonde brow rose. And Power whined a little, but didn't let go of him. You're less scary than Makima. You helped me. Makima didn't. No, she didn't. That much was certainly true, but the bat devil hadn't been particularly strong, either. But you like Makima. It wasn't a question. Power's gaze seared into his. That's complicated. He leaned back on the couch, idly wishing he had something to drink. All this talking was 30 work. I don't know if I like her. In a way, I'm like her leash. I hold her back. If I wasn't around she'd probably get up to all sorts of shady shit. 
Power poked her fingers together. I can be shady. No, you can't. He laughed at the offended noise she made. But I don't dislike that about you. You're honest, in your own way. He paused, weighing his words, and shrugged, not seeing the harm in making a request of her her in return. Don't die, power. She tilted her head, rather reminding him of a puppy. Where's that coming from? Just a thought. You don't die, and I won't die. Sound fair. She sniffled and clung tighter to him. Promise. He raised his little finger. Pinky promise. Of course, then Power just had to know what a pinky promise was, that required an explanation of its own and a demonstration besides. Such a strange girl, this fiend of his. Despite her age, she acted like a child half of the time. It was damn hard to get a read on her, ya you know. On she was giving him the look again. Tell you what, he offered, desperate to stem the puppy eyes, I'll treat you to dinner sometime, we'll see how it goes from there, would you like that? Said eyes lit up as she granted him a tooth wide grin. Only meat, no veggies. Speaking of which, a telltale gleam sparked in her eye. Oi, don't you dare. Chomp. She bit down on his arm with a happy cry, drawing an annoyed noise from him as her lips nuzzled his wrist. A faint beat of wooziness rattled him. Oi, just because I can heal doesn't mean I can't feel that, ya know. Power will be strong someday. She took her mouth from his arms and licked her lips clean. I'll keep drinking your blood and get really, really strong. So don't leave. Don't go back to your world, okay? His smile died an ugly death skewered by a thousand knives. Dot dot dot. Makima told you, didn't she? Maybe. His first instinct was to rebuke her, tell her to stay out of his business, you know. But he paused, considering her words. He'd accomplished so much in the elemental nations. All he needed to, actually. His world was safe and sound, and had been for quite some time with the Shinigami made him that offer. Was he really needed over there? Or was he needed here? Sure enough, the answer came readily. There was so much good he could do here and power wants seconds. Not again. Point zero point zero point zero. What happened to you? Naruto's head kissed the pillow with a Goron. I hate you so, so, so much right now, Makima. He heard her hum as she settled in beside him. I take it your little jaunt was a success, then. More than I care to admit. Naruto flopped over into bed beside her, steadfastly ignoring her curious look. Power's been pestering me for the last three days. I only just now managed to get away from her. Hmhm. Her back pressed against his own. As expected, she's hardly the one to take no for an answer unless you force her to capitulate. Flopping over on their shared cot, he shot her a withering glower. You plan for this. I plan for everything. There it was again, another of her small subtle smiles. Just as I use everything. Speaking of which, I'm curious, why didn't you use my power against the bad devil? The great gears of his mind ground to a halt as his thoughts fizzled out. What do you mean? I used the chains, tied him up real good before I beat him down, just like you asked. No, she snuggled closer. Those weren't my chains, they were stronger. I wasn't aware you were capable of such. Her hand traced his chest, idly fiddling with one of the buttons of his shirt as though it were some grand gemstone. Don't tell me you've been holding out on me this entire time. He hadn't been. His eyes fluttered shut and open in a rapid blink. But if those weren't hers, wait. Kashina mom, had chakra chains. He remembered them clearly. Almost frightfully so. Kurama huffed in his head. You needn't remind me. Had he? Dot had he used her chains? Could he do that now? Was it a bloodline? He'd never been able to utilize such an ability than before but back there, it had felt so natural, almost second nature to him. He'd willed it and they appeared at his command. Was Makima to blame for that? In lending him some small semblance of her power, had she accidentally awakened his own? Thoughts for later. A light laugh tumbled out of him. So, how about that date? Makima beamed. I happen to know a little place. I do hope you like Italian food. Point zero point zero point zero. 
Makima acquiesced all too willingly. Almost suspiciously so. Strange. In short order she rented out a rather handsome restaurant for just the two of them, replete with the finest of food. She hadn't been wrong about the Italian bit. This place served a mean spaghetti and meatballs. It was no match for ramen in his estimation, but it was still so damn good. Eat as much as you like, she crooned, politely tucking into her own meal. I'll foot the bill. Should I ask why? Makima hummed and laid one hand against her cheek. I've done terrible things, Naruto. Even now I can't telephone if I'm allowing you this close because you amuse me or something else. Paying for your meal is the least I can do. Thanks, I guess. You shouldn't thank me. Her smile thinned. Those who interest me often die a horrible death. He took another bite of his meal. And you think I will? Dot dot dot. I'm not certain, but I'd rather not risk it. Her eyes met his, suddenly sharp. Show me your power, Naruto. That's an order. He felt the weight of her command ripple through the air and slam into him. Dot. Dot dot. He ignored it. A blonde brow rose in mild annoyance. And why would I do that? He expected anger, confusion at the very least. All he received was a giggle. You haven't changed, good. I'd be disappointed if it was that easy to control you. However, quick as can be she stood, circled their table, and sat in his lap. Dot dot dot. I can be rather persistent. He sighed. Ain't gonna be that easy. She smiled. You can't blame me for trying. Blue eyes rolled in agitation. I absolutely can. You gotta stop doing that. Doing what? She shifted her weight against him, and ground her rear into his lap ever so slightly. Do you mean this? Yes. That. Right there. What you're doing right now. Makima didn't stop. Damn her. Each movement designed to distress and delight. She knew exactly what she was doing, sultry succubus that she was. Naturally. She was doing this deliberately. As expected of a primal devil. She was no slouch when it came to seduction, he'd give her that. Unfortunately for her, he was a man of his word. His hands settled on her hips as he lifted her and set her back into her chair. She pouted. You really are a tough nut to crack, aren't you? Lady, you don't know the half of it. Careful, now. Her golden eyes narrowed ever so slightly, becoming hooded slits of molten amber. I enjoy you, but you're riling me up. Don't you know better than to tempt a devil? His lips quirked in a smile. He couldn't resist the joke. What's better than a devil you don't know? The devil you do. And you think you know me. He shrugged one shoulder. Well enough. A faint flicker of displeasure crossed her face. You have no idea. Shall I show you? Playing rough, was she? His head butted against hers. If you wanna throw down again, I'm game. Her cheeks dimpled in a small smile. Please, I'm not foolish enough to engage you in a head-on clash. But a battle of wits, well. I believe you're lacking on that front. How so? Simple. She crooned. You failed to notice that I claimed the last meatball. Eh? His eyes bulged. You what? Oi. He growled as she snatched up the last of his spaghetti, skewered her prize on her fork and delicately placed it upon her lips. A smug Makima was a dangerous Makima, as he well knew she was up to something. Fine, have your prize. Is there a particular reason you chose this place? Oh my, I nearly forgot. Her lips quirked in a smile. Did you know? The bat devil had a lover. I believe it was the leech devil. She was last sighted in this area. His eyes widened. She wouldn't. No, surely not. Not even Makima would be cruel enough enough to turn a date into a mission. Naruto looked up, just in time to see a car hurtle through the window. Damn it, Makima. A.N. It's truly a delight, writing these two. Would you like this to continue? Moreover, would you like weekly updates? Ya or nay? By all means let me know. So, in the immortal words of Atlas. Review, would you kindly? and enjoy the previews, you'll see them soon enough. If this remains a story, of course. Y'all ain't prepared for power. Previews. He embraced her. He embraced her and all her schemes fizzled out like a candle in the wind. Why? 
What was it about this simple act of being held that shattered and scattered her schemes to the wind? She didn't know. She wanted to know. She didn't want to know. I don't find this disagreeable. Is that your way of saying you like it? She drove the point of her elbow into his gut. You're ruining this. Shut up and hug me. He humored her. No, not like that, lower. He didn't budge. Oh, blast it all. Was he going to make her beg? Must she surrender the very concept of control to him? Please. The word escaped her in a blend between a mewling wind and a gasp. Touch me. His hands caressed her hips, then her inner thighs now. She'd never allowed such a thing before. Her very blood was boiling in her veins, demanding release. You're one of those mature, teasing types aren't you? Jimeno winked at him with her good eye. Bingo. Right, you're going to be a handful. Is this everyone? Well, we're missing a few at the moment. One look at Kobeni and he made up his mind. All right. His hands clamped down on the skittish girl's shoulders, effectively anchoring her in pace. I'm adopting you. Way. You don't have to call me, Papa, or anything, but I'm gonna help you deal with those nerves of yours, okay? Oi, power. Kick his ass. Power didn't need to be told twice. Vengeance shall be mine. Denji tilted his head. Wait, if Makima's basically the mom, does that make Naruto the dad? Aki absolutely choked on his spit. How can you even say that? I mean it's obvious, ain't it? They got that parent vibe, yo. Do you have any idea how much trouble you've caused me? Now be a good boy and die. Makima. No. Ah. Not even a little. Naruto began to tap his foot. Dot boo. She dropped her victim with a sigh. Denji. My man, trust me when I say you don't wanna stick it in crazy. Ain't that what you're doing? Yes. Naruto flicked his forehead but the difference is I can beat Makima's ass if she does something stupid. I've done so several times. Here, let me tell you a story. Oi, 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 just what the hell are you? Annoyed is what I am. Naruto dug the bullet out of his forehead with a sigh. Really? Guns? You thought guns would stop me? I'll let you in on a little secret. Makima's pretends to be nice. I don't. He made to run a hand through his hair only to realize he'd gotten blood all over it. You just ruined a perfectly good suit and tried to kill Jimeno. Huh. The world was tipsy. Was he drunk after all? Time to die. He swept past and tore a gunman's head clean off their shoulders. The girl panicked and raised her right hand. Snake. I don't think so. Karama. Bite. 